what we're going to be looking at here is a long-term contract. Where we're going to be looking at the revenues and the gross profits on this contract and also how we record it on our balance sheet and our income statement. And we're going to be using the percentage of completion method on this contract and it's going to be based on a cost to cost basis here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up this table where we have to determine the gross profit here for each of the years here of this contract. And what we're going to be looking at on this contract, we're going to have a three years on the contract here, uh, 20x1 through 20x3, but we're only going to be really concentrating on year 20x2 here. But to do that, we first have to calculate our gross profit here for year 20x1. And what I'm going to be showing here, this uh, table is based on thousands of dollars. So we're going to start out with our contract price here of 3200000 Now I'm just representing that here as 3200 So that's how our numbers are going to be laid out here. So first thing we have to do here uh, to determine the uh, gross profit here for the year here, we have to start out with our cost to date here. That's what it costs on this contract. And that was 800 here. And then we estimate the cost to complete the contract here at $1,200. So our total estimated cost to complete the contract here is 2000 So compare that to the contract price here, 3200 So uh, difference gives us a total estimated profit here of $1,200, subtracting our costs here from our contract price. So the next thing we have to do is we have to allocate uh, this uh, our total estimated profit here. Uh, and we're going to do that here based on this cost here. We're going to take our cost to date here, this $800, our cost to date we have here, and we're going to divide it by the total estimated cost to complete here, 2000 So if we go down here and look at our calculations, 800 here divided by 2000 is going to give us 40%. So that's what we're going to have here, a percent completed to date here in this contract. So that's what we uh, calculate the percentage completed here at 40% on the contract. Take that time, the total estimated profit here of 1200 and you're going to come up with the total gross profit recognized here of 480 Now, we have to subtract out the previous year's gross profit. There is none in this case here since it's the first year. So our gross profit for the current year here is 480 uh, 480 Now, looking at our year 20x2 here, which we're going to be concentrating on. Again, contract price same amount here, 3,200. Uh, our costs to date in this case uh, are 1,650. Our estimated cost to complete at 550. So our total uh, cost to complete here, this contract is $2,200 now. Now, this is where we calculate our ratio here, the percent completed to date. And that's based on the cost to date here of 1,650 divided by the uh, estimated total estimated cost to complete here, 2,200. So we'll go down here and just looking at that here, 1,650 divided by 2200 you're going to come up with 75 percent so that's the percentage here um, uh, per completed to date on this contract so our total gross profit here for the uh, of 700 or for the year here would be a total estimated profit of a thousand times 75 percent gives us total gross profit recognized here at 750 dollars but we have to subtract out previous year's gross profit here 480 and difference here gives us a gross profit for the current year here of 270. okay so now we've calculated our gross profits here for both year one 20x1 and 20x2 now let's look at how we record this here and we're going to start down here with this uh, we're going to set up, we have to set up this special uh, account here and they call it a construction in progress and it's an inventory account here on the balance sheet so what we're going to be looking at here is this this account we're going to set up this special account here uh, called construction in process progress here on this contract here and what it does is it accumulates the costs on the contract here and also the gross profit that's earned on the contract along with this uh, construction in progress account here we're we're also going to have a revenue count here for the on this long-term contract uh, on our income statement and then also with that here you would have all these other accounts here your materials your cash your payables the costs on this contract here and what you're going to do here and we'll get in we'll just look at it briefly here you're going to credit out or you're going to remove all these costs uh, these contract costs whatever they are here you're going to move them into uh, uh, recognize them as construction expenses on your income statement and also they get moved up here into your construction in 
process account, that inventory account. So let's look at this construction and process account. So first for our costs here, well, we're really looking, uh, let's just look at here at year uh, uh, one here. Well, we had what? Our cost here was 800 on it. So no previous cost. So with that for the first year was 800 here. And then for the next year here, this is how you work that here. So for the next year X2 here, you're going to take um, the 1650 here, uh, the cost to date here, but you have to subtract out what you had in the previous year of 800. So difference here going down here 1650 minus 800 is going to give us the cost here for this second year here at, at year 20x2 at 850. So that's how you work that here. And then next for our gross profit. Well we already calculated that here for the first year 20x1 it was 480 and then for year 20x2 270. So going down here debit our construction and process here for 480 and our gross profit uh, for the second year here of 270. So you'll see what's going on here in this construction and progress inventory account. We're debiting of that and increasing it here for the costs that are being accumulated for each year on this contract plus the gross profit earned on the contract. Those are being accumulated in there. Now along with that here Let's just move over to our revenue account here first, and that's on our income statement for this long term contract. So how would we record our revenue here? Well, we just take the contract price. That was that $3,200 or $3,200,000. I'm just showing it as $3,200 here times uh, what we would have here for year 20x2 here. So let's go up and look at that here. So for 20x2, the percent completed here was 75%, but we also had the 40% here completed in 20x1. So we would have recognized our 20x1, that 40% here of the revenues. So we're really going to take the difference here. We take the difference here, looking at that 75% here and subtract out the 40% that we already recognized here. So difference gives us what? 35% here times the 3,200,000 that we would credit here as a revenue on our income state for, for 1,120 here. So Okay, so what we've done here, okay, we've calculated our revenue here on this con on this long-term contract. Now, let's just go down to our um, other account here that we looked at. Those materials, those cash, those payables, all those other accounts, all the costs involved in those contract here, and we would have credited them out here. We would have had some debit amount for each of those accounts, so we would have credited them out here at what we calculated up here, and we would have moved them into the construction and process account here. Remember that first year we calculated that here to be 800 and then the next year here 20x2 was 850 so credit remove those accounts here move them into your construction and process account here and you also reckon move them over here so any credits here to all those accounts goes into your construction expenses on your income statement so in that case um, uh, first year here was 800 next year here 850 so credits here goes to your debits here in your construction expenses here so what you're doing here you're taking these ex construction expenses and moving them all in here and you would be subtracting those here from your revenues both are on your income statement so your construction expenses reduce your revenues here on your income statement so looking at our gross profit here really the balancing amounts here. So what we would do here, our gross profit here, let's look at year 20x2 here, that 270 here. So we take our revenues here that we had calculated 1120, subtract out our expenses here for the second year here of 850 here. So that gives us 270 here. That would be what we recognize as gross profit. Now remember we calculated that up above here. That was 270. So we've done the same thing here on our balance sheet and our income statement by setting up these this revenue account here and then our construction expenses. The difference here goes to gross profit here on this construction and process inventory account. So just remember here, you have to set up this construction and process inventory account and that uh, accumulates all the costs up to the date here and also the gross profit earned on the contract. So that would uh, is carried here as an inventory item here uh, on your balance sheet. Okay, so the next thing, let's go up and let's look at how we deal with our billings and our collections. And again, I've just got it laid out here for those three years here. Billings to date, and we're going to be looking year, at year here 20x2, concentrating on that. 
So again, when you're dealing with these billings and your collections, that when we talk about collections here, that's the cash collections that we make, and the billings, those are the invoices that we have on that contract. So that's what we're being billed here. So again, we're going to set up this special account here as our balance sheet on our balance sheet as a contra inventory account, and that's going to be called billings on construction and process. Again, it's a contra inventory account. It works opposite the inventory. So let's look at what we're dealing with here. So first for our billings to date here, and we're looking at year 20X2. So uh, we set up our accounts receivable here again on our balance sheet, and that's for our billings to date here. And we would debit that here for $1,200. Now, how do we get that here? So we've taken our 20X2 billings to date here of 1800 and we would subtract out what we already billed here in 20X1 of 600, uh, 600 here. So the difference gives us 1200 here. Okay, so we increase our accounts receivable for those billings here to date by 1200 And then over for, again, 20X2 here, we would have credited our Buildings, billings on construction in progress here for $1,200. That's that special contra inventory account. So debit here to accounts receivable, $1,200. Credit to our billings on construction and process here for $1,200. And then just for the first year here, remember we had a billings to date of $600 here. So this billings on construction, we that's being increased here as a credit or a contra revenue, or contra inventory account here in our balance sheet. So that includes, it, it you accumulates all the billings here on that construction and process that we have here. Now, we made some looking at our collections here, and we're going to be looking at here, we had a collection here in year 20X2 of 1620, and we compare that to the collection that we made here previous year in 20X1 of 540. So this is what we're going to have received um, in cash here for the, the current collections here. So 1620 less the 540 previously collected here gives us 1080 here. Debit or increase our cash by 1080. Now, our debit here to cash would reduce our accounts receivable here. Credit or reduce our accounts receivable by 1080. So what we want to take away from this here is that you, when you have these billings and collections, you're going to set up this uh, special account here, bill, billings construction in progress, which is a contra inventory account here. And you're going to whatever you have in your receivable here uh, for the uh, for the billing that you have and set up in your accounts receivable increase your accounts receivable by that amount here then you're going to credit your building uh, billings and construction and process account increase it by that amount and then we just we're looking here at year 20x2 here okay so we've taken care of that now let's go down and let's really look at how we work with these uh, this construction and progress a process inventory account here and how this billings and construction and progress this contra inventory account work and again we're going to be reporting our both on construction and progress and our billings here looking at an asset versus a liability here on our balance sheet so first off let's just make clear here this billing a billings construction and progress account that's a contra inventory account what I mean by that and it's sitting on our balance sheet both of them here construction and progress our inventory account that we first dealt with here remember we increased it here for the costs all the costs that were going into that into our contract here and then all for the gross profit that we recognize here for the contract now the Billings here, let's make sure, uh, what I want to get here for this, again, for contra inventory. You can see here uh, the construction, a debit here uh, on our inventory account here, and the billings account here, debit debit plus here, and our construction account here, uh, and a billings account here, debit is minus, and same for credit, minus here. Uh, for a construction account, cr a credit plus here for a billings account. Just so you understand, a contra inventory account. They work up. This works opposite your construction account. So, as I mentioned here, we had all our costs here sitting in our construction account here, and the gross profit that we accumulated up until this second year that we were looking at here. And if we total everything up here in our construction and process, the debit amount here was twenty-four hundred dollars. That's our total here, and then we compare it to our billings. In in our construction and progress account here and we had total buildings here first year 600 plus the set 20x2 the second year at 1200 so the total amount here of our billings and construction is eighteen hundred dollars so what we really want to do is we want to compare 
both of these accounts here, our, our construction in progress versus our billings account, to determine whether we've got an asset or a liability here in our balance sheet. So this is the deal here. If the construction in process account here is greater, that is your debit total here, is greater than the uh, uh, billings construction in progress, is greater than the credit amount here in your billings and construction account, then you would record it as an asset here, a current asset on your balance sheet. But if the opposite is true, say your debit amount here in your construction and process account here, uh, debit amount here, whatever your total is sitting here is less than your billings and construction and progress. It would be less than your credit here on your billings account, then it would be a liability. So if construction and progress, the debit here total amount is less than your billings on your construction and progress here, then it would be a liability here on the balance sheet. Okay, so that's what you have to do here. You have to sum up your debits, total construction and progress, your total debits amount here. In this case, we had 2400 here for the at the end of the second year here. And then our billings and construction and progress we had at the end of the second year, we had 1800 here. So you can see we have a greater amount here in our construction and progress, 2400 versus the billings account here of 800. So then the difference here uh, would be an asset here on the balance sheet. And then let's go down and let's look at how we'd record this here. So on our balance sheet, our current assets and looking at 20x2 here, our receivables for the construction and progress. Remember we uh, we looked at those those accounts receivable that we had take our build amount, whatever we build up to that point here, and then we would subtract out what we collected here. So we had build here 1800 and then we collected 1,620 here on that. So that gives us, um, we'd be re re reporting here receivables as a current asset here of 180 here on our balance sheet here. So that's what you have to do here. You have to take the, whatever your build amount is here and you uh, whatever versus what you're collected. Now we'd have to go up and look at that uh, if you go back here and look at our table here. The billings to date here was uh, for 20x2 was 1800 and then our collections to date here for 20x2 was 1620. That gave us the a current asset here billings here greater than what we collected. So current asset here of 180. Now for our, our inventories here, this is what we're talking about were our inventories here. The difference between our construction and progress and our billings account here. So our inventories here for construction and progress we had at 2400 here and then uh, for the billings we had at 1800. So the difference is going to go to an inventory, we listed here as inventories as a current asset here of six hundred dollars. It's current asset here because uh, the construction and progress here of twenty four hundred is greater than the uh, billings here of eighteen hundred. And then on our income statement here for twenty x two, remember we calculated that uh, our gross profit on the construction on that contract at two hundred and seventy. That is what our gross profit here we had here on our, in our construction account. So this is how you'd lay out your balance sheet here for these current assets here. You see so a difference. You have to determine your receivables here, the build versus the collected amount, and then the inventories here, the difference between your construction and progress and your billings for the construction and progress. So in this case, the difference here was an asset. So everything we list here is current assets. And then on our income statement here, we have to look at the gross profit here for the the current year here, 20x2. So everything here was based on 20x2. Tried to go through this problem here rather quickly here, but just remember here when you're dealing with these long-term contracts here, you have to set up these two special accounts here, this construction and progress uh, inventory account here, and then you have your uh, contra inventory account here, all on our balance sheet, billings and construction and progress. Construction and progress, again, it, re it includes accumulative costs on the contract plus the accumulated gross profit here. And then the billings, that was simply what we looked at here for our accounts receivable on that contract. Okay, so that'll conclude our discussion here on this long-term contract. And this is where we're using the percentage of completion method here, cost to cost basis to determine our gross profits here and also our costs. Okay, so that'll sum up our topic.